Many psychologists have long understood the interconnection between psychology and spirituality. Carl Jung explored this integration, this connection, in his theory of the collective unconscious. Later in psychology's history, the humanistic psychologists and the existential psychologists also considered this kind of interconnection in, in their discussion of human potential as well as our search for meaning in life. Over time, psychology has evolved and moved away from these theoretical bases to a firmer basis, looking particularly in terms of how science helps us understand who we are, who we are as individuals. In particular in this process, genetics and neuroscience have been invaluable. At the beginning of the century, the genetic code, the human genome, was mapped. Also within the last two decades, there have been great advances in neuroscience, the study of the brain and how the brain functions. And we know that who we are as individuals is largely based on our genetics and our brain function. And it isn't just our brain function and genetics that make us the people we are. There are also other dimensions, other components that we need to consider. For instance, we're each born into our own time, into our own place in history. We typically refer to this as our generation, whether we're a boomer or a millennial or a member of some other generation. We're also born into a particular culture. Both our generation, our time, and our culture are things that shape who we are and how we understand life. They provide us with a foundation for grasping what's important in life, what our values could be, what's important for us, how to strive and form relationships, wh what we're doing in life. So these are all aspects of ourself that shape and evolve throughout our lives. In particular, I wanna look a little bit further at neurology and brain science. We know that our brain can evolve and change over time. The way it functions is dependent on our environment in many ways. So for instance, in childhood, whether a child is getting the proper care or if it's neglected, whether there's nutrition or a lack of nutrition, uh, whether there's abuse, and then later in life, whether there's trauma, all of these things impact the brain. We know that ways that we can care for the brain as well we know that the things we do for heart health, good diet and regular exercise, increase our brain's capacity and help our brain to function well. But another thing that helps our brain to function well is spiritual practice. In particular, a great deal of research has been done on meditation. Now meditation has been researched because it's a practice that can be measured. We know when meditation begins, we know when it ends, we can see the brainwave patterns when someone's in meditation. So that's where the emphasis has been in terms of spiritual practice and, and research. We know that over time, meditation helps regulate the neurochemicals in the brain, the chemicals that help the brain to function well. But meditation also impacts how the brain grows and develops. For example, if a person has experienced trauma in life, that trauma is generally stored in a series of cells in the brain. And the cells, the neural pathways around those cells, over time can atrophy. In essence, they die. But with meditation, there are new pathways that grow over those cells and that compensate for the loss of those, the previous neural pathways so that the brain begins to function better, more whole, and, and develop more capacity. So it's important to realize that meditation and spiritual practice isn't just about some disembodied kind of spirituality. Instead, they're really about how we function down to our brain. I've been passionate about the integration of psychology and spirituality for decades. And part of my passion is the belief that spirituality really impacts 
the way we live. In psychology, we talk about thinking and emotion and behavior. And spirituality helps our brain to function better so that we think more clearly. It helps to regulate our emotion. And in turn, by regulating our emotion, we behave in ways that are more gentle and gracious. So that spirituality really impacts our life in an entire way. If you're interested in this topic and want to read more, my book, The Integrated Self, may be of interest to you. In that, I present a lot of ideas about how this integration works, as well as how to understand what it means to integrate spirituality with mental health. Thanks for your time today. I appreciate you listening. Please be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and leave me some comments so that I can respond to you. Mm -hmm.